On today's EMBN show, some hard-hitting EMTBs from a particularly hot and wet part of Europe. So Steve, hot and wet doesn't sound like North Wales. Where are we heading then? No, actually, we're diving into Malabia in northern Spain, actually the Basque Country and Orbea have got a new Wild FS. It's actually a race-winning bike, isn't it? Mm -hmm, uh, yes. From the EWS uh, E last year. This is significant news, I think, Chris. Uh, 20 kilos for a full-power EMTB with mm -hmm. a Bosch motor. You can have it with a Bosch race motor even and a 750 or a 625 watt-hour battery. I mean, this this is huge news, really, isn't it? Yeah, it made quite a lot of changes on this. I think the first big change is removing that battery door. So this bike has actually got a battery that's fixed in place, meaning that you can't remove it by yourself. You can if you drop the motor and stuff out of it, but something they don't really advise. So they've lost uh, that battery door. And also saved 900 grams from the overall frame weight as well. So. That is a lot. I mean, uh, Orbea say that they've stiffened the front triangle up by 50%. Mm -hmm. That's big, it, isn't it? 50%. It, it is a lot. You know, the, I'd like to ride this bike. Mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, folks need to tell you we've not ridden it. Uh, we just got the press release on it. Uh, although uh, our colleague Don has been over to uh, Malabia to ride the bike. Um, oh, I'd love to go ride it. <laughs> yeah, looks an awesome spot, doesn't it? It does. Do you know the Picos de Europa, which yeah. is kind of to the to the west of, the, I think the region's called Gipuzkoa. Mm -hmm. I think. I think obviously Obe used to make guns back in the past. There's a big history of uh, manufacture of this company, um, but. What about the geometry, Chris? They've, they've tweaked the geometry in the bike as well, haven't yeah, they? Yeah, so slacking the head angle up by 1.5 degrees and in turn steepening the seat angle up by 1.5 degrees. So kind of mirror image there. Raise the bottom bracket up, is it five mil as well? Yeah. And lengthen the head tube by 20 mil. So you've got a bit of a slacker, steeper yeah. and higher BB. I mean, so. good God, man. Mm -hmm. 160 or 160, 170 travel. This mm -hmm. is a really hard hitting bike and for that weight as well. So. That, that's what I was worried about. I was thinking maybe they've gone for lightweight components, but not at all. No. I mean, they've got Fox 38s on there. No. You've got, uh, obviously, the, the good thing with Orbea is you can configure the bike any which way you want. So, you know, a bike with 170 travel, you need those downhill tires so that you can, you've got the option of having the Asagai downhill casing tires on there. You know, uh, Orbea have got their new wheel, the Aqua, I think. Mm -hmm. Do you pronounce Aqua, I think? Aqua, yeah. Aqua, yeah, yeah. Aqua wheel set. <laughs> so, all in all, yeah. uh, what a monster, yeah. a lightweight monster of a bike. And, and I, uh, I love the way they've done an uh, aluminium version of this and a carbon version of it. You've got the different size battery, 625, 750 watt hours, and those choices of motors, like you mentioned, the uh, race motor or the performance Chris, line CX. You, you've, well. got, you've got to ride that Bosch uh, CX Race Limited. It, and it is, it is a limited edition motor. Folks, if you if you want the one of the finest motors in the business, get Get there quickly because they are very limited in numbers. I, I think it was, was it like 200 per brand or, or something like that? But well, there is a significant yeah. difference in the power delivery. You know, it's everything all in one go. So if you want to tackle technical climbs or extended climbs, there there is a difference. I think I put it at, I think there's four seconds over, well, over, over a, mm -hmm over a one and a half minute hill climb, I think, which is huge, isn't it? Imagine that motor combined with that lightweight chassis on this thing. That thing is going to be an absolute monster, isn't it? Up I know, and downhill. because I rode the CX Race Limited Edition on, on the uh, on the, um, on the White Works E180, which is 26 kilos, so a bike which is six kilos lighter. It's going to be, it's going to be a handful, I'm sure. Yeah. But I think, Orbea, you've done an absolutely amazing job on this think, bike. Yeah. It is it's visually stunning. Mm -hmm. It's got all the right parts in it. Price points as well, 5,699 euros, kicking off those base aluminium models, all the way up to those carbon models, which is obviously going to cost a lot more, but mm. yeah, good stuff. Uh, okay, folks, uh, I hate to say it, but uh, it's that time of the year is coming very soon. So you might be thinking about getting some new gifts for your family. And I think Chris has got the ultimate in, yeah. uh, in a kid's Christmas present, right? Definitely. The guys over at Reset Bikes actually are offering a kit that converts your regular mountain bike into a kid's e-mountain bike. Now, this little hub drive kit, £550, comes with a battery, speed control unit, and of course that back wheel, which you can convert or you know, swap all your kit over, your disc brakes, your cassette, and just convert your kid's bike 
to an e-bike. So what you've got then, you've got the option of having a 20 inch or a 24 inch rear wheel kit. So you, what you've got, you've got a, a wheel with a hub drive in there, which literally slots into your existing kid's bike. Mm -hmm. You've got a little power, power tool battery pack. Yeah, literally on there. a drill battery. Yeah. So I think this is incredibly good. Mm -hmm. And also is, is means that the e-bike is actually quite Lightweight as well, isn't it? Because yeah. that little that little battery pack is yeah. not a big sort of 750 like you get on an adult bike. So exactly, yeah. I'd imagine it's quite quite cool and yeah. manageable bike. Ride. Well, you can get. We rode 12 miles actually. Got one of these kits on my kid's bike, and he was absolutely flying on this thing. He's mm. got five le different levels of assist that come from this motor as well. So you can obviously go uh, assist one, it's like mm. eco mode, and then all the way up to five, which is going to be like your turbo mode. But yeah, we did 12 miles. He still had a little bit of battery. So who's the quickest up the hill on an e-bike? I don't want to admit this, but I did have my other son on the ride shotgun mount in front of me. So I had a kid and my bike. I was in turbo mode and I couldn't actually keep up with him going up Chris, the hills. I tell you what, it's all about power to eight. Uh, we've got some news here with this O chain. Didn't we mm -hmm. see that on the Rossi bike a couple of years ago? Yeah, it's a while back now, but they've actually introduced this for all the big motor brands out there. Uh, Bosch, Brose and Shimano. Now, if you don't know what an O-chain actually does, is for when your suspension is activated, traditionally on a standard mountain bike and e-bike, you'll get a bit of kickback through the cranks when that back wheel is bouncing around due to the chain pull, isn't it, on the Well, it's actually, just des des depends on, depends on lots of things, depends <coughs> on the gearing, depends hmm. on the suspension design. I mean, there's lots of things, you know, anti-squat, anti-rise, it's a pretty complicated subject, but I, do you know what, I actually think I actually think the pedal kickback, pedal feedback, sorry, is is uh, is probably possibly quite a good thing in mm. certain situations. But um, I think the guy who originally designed it was actually blown away back, obviously when Aaron Gwynn snapped his chain back and he won that he race did. by a huge margin. And was it Nico Mullally? Nico Mullally. He as did, well? yeah. Uh, and, and you know what? I've actually ridden, I've, I've done testing at mm. length on 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 downhill bikes with the chain and without the chain. Mm -hmm. And and what it does allow you to do is when, when you've got entry speed into corner, the bike, well, on especially on the, on the demo that I rode, was you, you've got more poise coming into, into like if you've got a like lumpy, big hit in terrain coming into yeah. a corner, mm -hmm. the bike does sit on the ground mm -hmm. in, a, in, a, in, a, in a better shape. But like I said, it actually depends on the mm -hmm. on the design of the bike as well. So, uh, but it's a, it's a cool it's feature. Cool. I think that's the idea. It doesn't come one. cheap though, right? No, replicate that kind of thing that you're talking about. Yeah, 328 euros for this. And as I mentioned, comes in all those different fitments for the motors out there. But yeah, it could be worth a try if you're experiencing that possibly. But yeah. Or, cha or take the chain off. Could go for that a bit cheaper, I suppose. Yeah, <laughs> but you will not go anywhere. Right, it's time for Where in the World to see where you guys and girls have been riding your e-bikes all over the world. And we've got some amazing entries in this week. And kicking things off, we've got uh, here, we've got Ride Bikes with his Kona Remote 160. In the West Burgerland. Yeah, 29 inch wheels, West Burgerland. Ever ridden there, Steve? I haven't, but to have in this next place, and yeah. this is Alastair, uh, Special Tivoli Comp. That, that is very close to the top of the EWS E Power Stage in Finale Ligure. And uh, yeah, what a tough place. Uh, Alistair, I hope you actually tried that power stage climb. Uh, but I also want to see the photographs, the inversion shots, which, which you mentioned uh, in the description. But then next, Chris, is that's a beautiful bit of rock climb, if ever I saw one. Where it is that? Utah, I think, I imagine, isn't it? It looks somewhere like that. What do you think? It's uh, actually no details of this photo whatsoever, but we had to stick it in. And there's also no details of the last shot either, which looks like it's in a lake somewhere. Yep, so if you are using that upload service, which the details are down below, make sure you use it as one and put your details in because we don't know who you are. Because you we've got in. two great shots there and they look like two great climbs, we don't know where they are. So uh, yeah, as Chris said, please leave your details. Right, Christmas has come in and we've all- He had to say it, didn't he? He had to say it. I know. I was trying to avoid the word, but you had to say it. It's hard to say, but Christmas is on its way and we have got so much stuff in the EMBN shop. What have we got, Steve? We've got cups, we've got- uh, New beanies, water repellent beanies. To yes. Keep your uh, head nice and I actually nicked this one off Dottie. So check out the merch actually on mm. some of our other channels as well GCN, GMBN, GMBN Tech. But uh, yeah, we've got some, the new beanies are particularly good. Yeah, they've got loads of stuff in there yeah. to keep you warm. We've got hoodies, jackets, Long beanies. Long sleeve tops. I think we do everything apart from pants pretty much, don't we? I don't wear pants, so oh. I'm not so bothered about that really. Too much information. But if you do want to get into that shop, be sure to check it out. Details are up on screen. 
Right, wow, what a week we have on EMBN this week. And we would like to introduce you to the man behind the camera, Louis Belton. Now he is a fit person and he's also a very fat person, fast person, sorry. And so coming up on the channel on Sunday is where I go head to head with the man that gives it the king size talk. Sweat and tears for that one, I suppose, isn't there? And then on Friday, we're taking a look at the ultimate drivetrain for your e-mountain bike, Shimano Link Glide. Shimano Link Glide, three times more durable, and uh, it, it is. And do you know what, Chris? Mm -hmm. It's you know, it's like th I think it's 300 grams for the cassette, heavier than say a 12-speed Hyperglide. Mm -hmm. But and I it's actually, cheaper as well. It's, it's way cheaper. Yeah, yeah. The thing is. I actually like the action of mm -hmm. it. It's really, really uh, crisp Off shifting. Yeah. And um, it's actually, I used it on the bike that I went head to head with Louis on, actually. Yeah. So, um, yeah, interesting. I mean, maybe it's just the gears that mattered. Oh. <laughs> and on get... Monday, we're taking a look at fit and removing your pedals. It sounds a simple task, but there's definitely some big mistakes you can make for that one. So check that one out to learn all about it. Right, it's time for Climb of the Week and we're heading into South Wales for this one. We've got a great entry in here from Robert on his Giant Trans X. He's in Penalta Park. You ever been there, Steve? Penalta, yeah, Penalta. I have. I've actually was involved in Penalta when they did the, uh, the landscaping works there. It's, it's home of the Pit Pony. Pit Pony was a sculpture uh, which was created by Mick Petz. If mm -hmm. you've never been there to see the Pit Pony, it is truly incredible. I mean, Chris, have you ever seen the aerial shots of the Pit Pony? I haven't. Google Pit Pony, Penalta. I'll have a look later on. It is stunning. It is stunning. <laughs> uh, but what a great climb. What a it, great climb. It's super good, isn't it? It might have got a bit of a camera tilt on this one, do you Chris, think? Chris, you can't say that. It looks steep you anyway. You can't but say that. <laughs> it is a good uh, climb, and he's saying he's been riding mountain bikes before and recently made the switch over to uh, e mountain bikes after a few years on the car scene to get another. I tell you, he was making Enjoy. the switch. I tell you, he was making the switch. Louis Belton. What was Louis doing? What was Louis doing on the weekend? Out in turbo mode mm -hmm. on your bike. Oh, what? <laughs> Wearing my bike out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, came in this morning, first thing he said to me, oh, do you know, I did loads of laps on the weekend. Yeah, I bet you did. The roadie has changed. <laughs> 35k on turbo. What? 35k in turbo. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay, it's time to look at all the comments from the recent videos here on EMBN. We had a lot of good feedback from last week's show, actually. Can you spot the difference between lightweight and full-powered e-mountain bikes? Oof, it's a big subject. Mm -hmm. Well, you can't. I mean, there's lots of questions here. There's one from Christian Casado. There's one from Paul Moody. And, uh, well, Paul Moody says, factory setting as SL bikes often don't give that uphill rush. Um, well, it's funny, you know, you, this, we're talking about two different things. Mm -hmm. We're talking about how a bike looks, which is what the video should have been about. But we, Doddy, got down this rabbit hole about you know what you can do on them. Mm -hmm. But you've shown that your your son with a hub drive in the back yep. can smoke you up a hill. <laughs> exactly. It depends. I mean, yeah. Louis. I mean, I'll, I won't tell you the time difference on the hill climb between me and Louis, but it is ab it is shocking. It is stagger staggeringly embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> so these whole like the lightweight thing, but I yeah. think we're talking about looks and and they are you cannot you cannot you cannot tell the difference. Can Ticks you? boxes for different folks, doesn't it? I think. Yeah. But for, um, we got one here from Jay Rose saying, for me, I like the bigger powered bike, just soaks up the chatter way better, and I sometimes like the motor. Uh, do most of the work because it's nice to have that option and I think it is if you want to go out for a ride and you want an easy ride stick it in turbo sit back enjoy the view enjoy the ride if you want to work out stick it in eco yeah folks I'm sure that the uh, debate the discussion will rumble <coughs> on about a lightweight versus full mm -hmm. powered but uh, if you guys need comments uh, yeah let us know we, we're keen to, to hear your views on this uh, big subject Right, we're in the bike vault and I'm beginning to think there's a conspiracy. This is now the third week running that we've got Sondo's bike in here. But I like this one because it's uh, it's a double seater with a Bifang motor. It's mm -hmm. in uh, it's in New England Holly Oak, Massachusetts. It's got the full Chichichits. setup there, got the double bars for the kids to hold on to, double seat and the little setup. What's that, ride shot? No, it's not a ride shotgun. It's a cool setup. It is it? a ride shotgun with a uh, decent, better, like, different gonna, seat. I'm going to even go super nice. Super nice on that one, definitely. Yeah. Uh, next up is Nick with a Scott Ransom E ride out in Burrator Reservoir in Yelverton. Amazing Come on, weekend. Chris, you remember Burrator? Oh, yeah. Huh? Nightmares. How can you forget Burrator? 
<laughs> nightmares. Uh, amazing weekend biking on Dartmoor. Oh, you can actually do it then. Amazing weekend. <laughs> Ten mates to enjoy my birthday, so out for a bit of a birthday ride, and I think that is another super nice. John, look, all right, let's let's cut the let's cut the shit. Uh, your shot, specialised Canebra expert in Wales. Uh, Dragon's back first ride is a super nice shot every day of the week. Definitely. Love the light on that. Next up, Nick's got his 2022 specialised Levo S Works with loads of upgrades out in Thurrock in Essex. Just out for an afternoon ride in the autumnal leaves. That's a beautiful shot. Got some good ones this Hold week. Hold on, have we got five back to back super nices? I think so. Okay, let's, let's bring that to a halt then. Even what? though Brian's Luna second, Luna two in uh, Long Island. It's still a good shot, isn't it? I was going to say, that can't be a nice for that, sure. It looks... That is super nice. There's another super nice. Oh, oh here we go. Oh, there you go. There John, you go. John Boy's back at it. 2022 Trek Rail 9.8 XT out of New River George National Park out in West the Virginia. Bike, the bike is undoubtedly a super nice. Mm. I like the addition to the uh, to the coil on there and the orange pedals. Yep. Uh, the Trek Rail is simply one of my favourite every mountain bikes. So mm. I'm going to put that, I'll say that again. The track rail is one of my favourite ever e-mountain bikes. It is stunning. Bike. And here's another bike we've talked about plenty on the show. We've got Zacathlon Stylus here from Zakazra uh, and a Peugeot full suspension frame with a DIY build going on out in. Where's that, Steve? Zach, hold on, hold on. The author is Zakarasa, and the yep. location is Skleratska in Poriba, Poland. Uh, discovering single track. Zakarasa, can you please wife. give us the right pronunciation? It'd be good if, they, if these guys sent in some, some video clips. Made his own uh, functional range extender as well to get uh, more length out of his bike. Yeah. Can't be a good extender, look. Yeah. Getting the miles in. Looks a bit cool. I need to get out to Malibia mm. for some hot, wet action. Right, next shot is in from Alan. He's got his Orbea Rise H30 up by the Angel of the North up in Gateshead. Yeah, we've got the wing spread wide on that one. Wow, wide, wide open. Uh, out for an autumn ride uh, since he's had Parkinson's for last year. So this is my fourth e bike. So getting out there despite having Parkinson's, that's a good job. No, the Orbea Rise, still a fantastic bike. I mean, yeah, I mean, what would be super nice or nice? Super nice. Super nice, Probably. Alan. Super yeah. nice. Oh my God! You think it's another Prowler? one? From Damon out in Lake oh, Dunstan uh, Trail. Brand new bike, huge shipping delays, finally arrives and he takes it out for a two day Oosh. maiden voyage. Oosh. Definitely another super nice. We're giving the super nice away. What is going on? And look is at this, Chris. Look at this, Chris. This is uh, Sam Semolivo. Where though? Or oh, Hamsterley. Mm -hmm. I think that's like a. Oh, I really like that shot. It's really cool, isn't it? The green of the really, mask and the bike. thinking on that one. Nice, super nice. Super nice. Super nice. Super nice. Super nice from the fastest man in the house. And that is 10 super nices in a row. I think that's got to be a show record. We've had some amazing entries in for, of course, <laughs> Bike Vault, Where in the World, all that stuff. If you fancy getting on the show, use that upload service. Love seeing all those pictures and videos. Can you do a whistle like that? There you there go. You go. That's what you get for a super nice in feature. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we've got to do. Um, but that is it for this week's show too. Let us know what you think about that new Orbea Wild Out of Malabia. It is an amazing looking bike and uh, I think it really ticks the boxes for most people out there. 20.9 kilos for that thing. Yeah. <whistles> Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and we shall see you next week.